It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. To his cause, oh yeah. Be thankful, thankful unto him. Genesis, the third chapter. Let's go to the second chapter. God had created the heavens and the earth, created man, placed him in, in the garden to dress and to keep it. So in the second chapter, starting with the 15th verse, the first, the first man made from the dust of the ground. We just didn't evolve. 
We didn't come, we didn't come out of the oceans and out of the seas and like some amphibious type animal or tadpole or frog or whatever. Amen. God made us. Yes, sir. God created man. Amen. In spite of what people say, say God created man yes, out of the dust of the ground. And can you imagine making something? Some of you might be talented enough to, to form a uh, uh, clay into some, some beautiful work of art, a piece of pottery. You might be able to sculpt something out of stone. But who can give life? Nobody. God himself breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and that man became a living soul, Adam. And he took from, from the, the rib of, of man, he took a rib out of man and made this woman made a woman, made a help, somebody comparable to him, somebody who could be with him. Eve, she was the mother of all living. So the book says, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Man has always had responsibility. You cannot live without responsibility. Even before sin, God made him responsible, okay? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat. You can eat of everything. There are all kinds of trees and all kinds of vegetation, everything. So you can freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. He didn't say in here, neither shall you touch it. God didn't say that. Satan tricked Eve with that. He said, thou shalt not eat of this tree. For in the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. You're going to die. And some people thought that, they thought that was to mean that Adam was going to literally just fall dead that day. Physically. He died. Well, he did. He actually did in that day because one day, according to the Bible, we know it, it reads in at least two places in Psalms and Wells, in Peter, that one day to the Lord is as what? It's a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So no man has ever lived a day. Adam lived to be 900 and how, how old? About 930 years, something like that. But he never quite lived a day in the sight of God. So not only did he die within that day's time in the sight of God, he died spiritually. Fellowship, relationship was broken. He sinned against God. So Satan tricked Eve. He, he deceived Eve. We, we just, we're not going to read it all. And in the third chapter, it reads this way. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, yea, has God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He knew what he said. Now, and, and this is, this is another, another thing. When you find yourself questioning what God said. That's, that's not wise. That's not wisdom leading you to do that. That's, that, that's, that's Satan. Satan started off putting doubts in, in the mind of this woman about what God had said. So, and the woman said unto the serpent, talking to a serpent, listen, now this is something else. This serpent, the serpent was more subtle. The serpent was more clever. The serpent was more, more intelligent than any other beast of the field. The serpent could speak. Yes, sir. He was a beast. He had legs. He could walk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he could speak. He spoke to this woman. He spoke to the woman. The serpent had intelligence. So Satan used this serpent to speak to the woman. And to put doubts in her, in her mind about what God had said. And the woman said unto the serpent, 
We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. You're going to have a conversation with the devil now. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Which he said that, but she added something. Neither shall ye touch it. God didn't say that. Lest you die. And it went on. He deceived the woman. She ate of the fruit. And she gave to Adam. Adam knew God meant what he said. And Adam disobeyed God because of his wife. <laughs> Sacrificed his, his relationship, everything. And ate of the fruit, did say whether well, it was an apple or whatever it was. Anyway, he ate of the tree of the garden, and man, and there it went. Everything, the eyes of them both were open. They knew that they were naked, and naked in biblical terms means sin. They were exposed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At first, they just knew good, man. And they ate of the fruit of the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They knew both good and evil. They had choice, and they chose from the beginning, to disobey God. That was horrible. And they tried to cover it up. They, they, tried to, they tried to hide. They sewed fig leaves together. Made themselves aprons to try to hide their nakedness. And something happened in the eighth verse and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard his voice. They heard his word, his voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where are you, Adam? God knew where he was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing is hidden from God. God wanted, Ad he wanted Adam to take ownership for what he'd done. Yes, sir. Amen. He wanted Adam to take responsibility yes, sir. for his lost position with God. Yes, to hold himself accountable. And I imagine when God's word goes out, he's... He, 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 he's nudging people. He's speaking to people. When we hear the word every day, where are we with God? And Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree where have I commanded thee that thou should not eat? God knew, already knew that he had eaten of the tree. And he started blaming it on the woman. And the woman, in turn, blamed sin on, on, on Satan. Satan didn't have nowhere to go. And that's what people try to do. People try to, try, they think they can appease God with fig leaves. Like Adam, they made themselves, they made themselves aprons out, out, of, out of fig leaves to try to hide their nakedness. And the world today, the, people think they can hide their sin, hide their nakedness, or they can appease God just by going to church. That's going to make it all right with God. Just by being a church member, just joining some organization. That doesn't, that doesn't appease God. You can be a dedicated, faithful, Johnny on the spot, Sunday go to meeting church member. And still, according to the words of Jesus, here, what he said he's going to tell many people that I never knew you. They made themselves coats of uh, uh, fig leaves, aprons out of fig leaves to hide their nakedness. That, did not, that didn't satisfy God. God did this in the 21st verse. And Adam called his wife's name Eve. She was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins 
and clothe them. The covering that they made would not, that wouldn't suffice. That wouldn't satisfy. And we try to cover our nakedness with self-righteousness and good deeds or whatever, you know? And it's good to do good things. It's good to repent and, and, and turn away from some, some things. But when you do it without Jesus, it means nothing to God. It means nothing at all. God, the, the first killing that we know of on planet Earth took place by God. And, and, and a killing is, is, is it just passive? This was violent. Yes, sir. God slew an innocent animal. Shed the blood of an innocent animal. The animal was not guilty. But took the life of the innocent. Sacrificed the innocent for the guilty. To cover man's sins. To make Adam and his wife be able to be accepted before God. To resume fellowship. But a horrible thing happened. God covered their sins. But because they sinned against God, sin became a part of the, the, the DNA of mankind. That's why David, a, a, a man of God, a prophet of the Lord, great king of Israel, I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. I was conceived in sin. Yes, sir. Sin is a part. That's why people need not just church membership. And, and, and oh, believe me, we have churches for, for any and everything you desire. We have, we have churches for the elite. We have churches for the, the well-to-do. We have, we, we have churches for everything. We have, we have, we have churches where, where sin against God is, is permissible, overlooked, taken lightly. We have churches where Jesus is never really preached. When salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ is not preached. But why do you think he was always just into it with the Pharisees, with the religious people of his time? Religion is what's crippling people. Amen. Religion will make you feel comfortable while you're on your way to hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The book talks about it, how people even hold the truth in unrighteousness. I won't tell people the truth. They made coats, I mean, they made fig leaves to hide their nakedness, to hide their sin. So God slew an innocent animal. That was brutal. Shed blood. The blood offering for the sacrifice of man's sins. And they taught this to their children. To two of them. To probably all of them, I'm sure. All the children they had. But Two in particular that the Bible speaks of, Cain and Abel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How to offer sacrifice to God. God has always been pleased with the blood atonement, the blood offering, the shedding of blood. And, and Hebrews tells us without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness. There's no cleansing, no putting away of sin. Amen. Not without the shedding of blood. Amen. People refuse to do it God's way. So when it was time to offer sacrifices, they taught both the boys the same thing, same teaching from the same set of parents. And Abel, he slew an animal, a lamb or something out, out of his flock and offered it up to God. He shed blood yes, and offered to God. Yes, and his brother Cain, since he, he was a, like a farmer, he gathered up some of his crops and offered them up to God. And he thought that God was supposed to like it. And that's the way people treat God. I'll give God what I want him to have. And they'll declare, I'm, I present myself before God, whether I have really accepted Jesus as my Savior or not, but they, they try to, you can't push yourself off on God. 
God's got to accept me because I've been around for so many years. No, 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 no. Everybody needs a savior. A savior, a lamb without spot or blemish. A lamb. You can't give God what you want him to have. You give God what he wants. He shed the blood of an innocent animal. Blood of the innocent for the guilty. Blood of the just for the unjust. Adam and, he, and his wife, Eve, they sinned against God. They brought sin on the whole human race. Yes, it's in our DNA. That's who we are. Amen. We're born in sinners. That's what the Bible says. All, not just a few people, not just I mean, church members, everybody. All have done what? have sinned. Didn't the book say it? All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous. Does the Bible say that or not? There's none righteous. No, not one. And some people think they're going to make it because of who they think they are. Because of their own self-righteous deeds and their the, the own principles and virtues, they think that God has to accept. No, he does not. Amen. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The blood of the unrighteous, I mean, uh, uh, of the, 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 the righteous, the blood of the innocent, yes, the perfect lamb of God must be applied to your life before God will even look at you. Yes, Come on now. People say, well, I've been praying about it, you know. That's, it's in the Bible, it's true. We know that God heareth not sinners. God, the only thing God would, would hear from me when I was lost, or when you were lost, communication would be opened up with us, between us and God, when and only when we would say and that's when, when we, we, we fell under conviction yes, sir. first drawn by God's spirit Hallelujah. to Jesus and Jesus in turn presented us to the Father yes, to be washed in his blood to be cleansed. The only prayer we could, we could have prayed for God to hear us is God have mercy on me. People don't want to humble themselves before God. No, no it's, like, it's like joining a club. Come up and shake the preacher's hand. And we'll baptize you next week. You'll be all right. And that's all it takes. It doesn't work like that, my friend. Yeah. Not at all. It's so simple. It's so simple. But you have to be drawn by God in order to receive it. It's a simple plan of salvation. The only prayer that he would hear is, is God have mercy on me and save my soul. I'm a sinner. And that, oh, that does it. That brings you, when you receive Jesus as Savior, that brings you into fellowship with him, into harmony with God, into peace with God. The, the lines of communication are open. Brother, just read that just, yes. just, just to get me going. It is in, in St. John, the ninth chapter. This man was being questioned, I believe, about a, a healing, yes, sir. something. St. John 9, 26. The blind man was healed. <laughs> and the Pharisees, they, they, they wanted this man to say that Jesus was a sinner, that he, that he was lost. 26 verse. Then said they to him again, what did he do to thee? Mm-hmm. How open he thine eyes. He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Why do you want me to keep telling you? Say, oh, you must want to be saved too. You, you, want, to be, you want to be his disciples. So he was, he was antagonizing the people. But he went on and told them. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. <laughs> Go ahead. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Read it. 
The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing done? Here's a marvelous thing. A marvelous work of God that's, that's done. That ye know not from whence he is, mm -hmm. and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Hallelujah. So you, know, you, don't, you don't recognize where he comes from. Even though he's opened my eyes, you're trying to say he's a sinner? He's opened my eyes, and you say you don't know where he comes from. It's from God. Amen. Go ahead, read, read it, brother. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners. Mm -hmm. so but we if, know that God hears not sinners. Yes, sir. That's the point. Go read it. Go finish that, and that's it. That's good. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. But God hears not sinners. That's the truth. And, and he does not. He does not. Now, Isaiah, the 64th chapter, since the days of Adam, God sacrificed the first animal, with lamb or goat, whatever it was, to cover man's sins. And that was taught on, on down the land. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. God loves the, 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 the sin, the, the, the offering for sin. God loves offering. He likes shed blood. Shed blood for the offerings of sin. Offer sacrifices to God. Shed blood. Even on down through the days of, of Moses and the Levitical priesthood, yes, it's about shedding blood. Blood shedding. And, and the priest, God laid out the tabernacle and the holiest of holies, showed them how, how to slay the animal outside the gate and offer the, offer the blood up, bring it before God. Just taught them the whole bit about the priesthood, but it was all about blood. And the, the priest was constantly working. Yes, Always. The priests were always at work. And once a year, he had to go into the, the holiest of holies and offer up the, the, the blood of the sacrifice, the lamb, for the sins of the people. And for himself. He had already offered up blood for himself. Always. Every year, he went. Offered blood. God needed something. Now, that would cover man's sin. That would cover man's sins and for a year and, and allow people to be in, in fellowship with God for a year. Every year, they had to come with this atonement for sin. Jesus came to take away our sins. He came to take away our sins by giving us a new birth in Christ. By giving us a new nature, that's why the Bible says that we have the mind of Christ. We have a new nature. Everybody needs a Savior. Now, 64, Isaiah 64. I'm just going to read a few of these. And move on. There is none righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody needs a savior. Nobody can save themselves. Nobody. No preacher can do it. I had somebody at one time just tell me about uh, how, how he, he'd gotten saved and he joined the church. And, and oh, he was just talking about it. I said, okay. I said, well, who saved you? He said, oh, Reverend so-and-so over there. I said, okay. <laughs> Reverend so-and-so. No minister, no priest, no mama, nobody. No man can save himself. A man's soul cannot be redeemed with silver and gold. Nothing. Hallelujah. We fell into slavery to sin and Satan. We had to be redeemed. Yes, sir. Praise God. We had to be bought. 
and brought back into our rightful place. We lived in death. We were dead, the Bible says, dead now, spiritually dead, separated from God, dead in trespasses and sins. Doesn't it say that? Yes, sir. So, we won't read it, but get it ready anyway. We were all dead, once dead in trespasses and sins, separated from God. And here the Bible tells us, in Isaiah the 64th chapter, I just want to get to one thing. People have totally, in the day and age that we live in, they're downplaying the role of Jesus. People think you can get saved by knowledge. People think you can get saved by your, I guess your, because of who your ancestors were. No way! Lord have mercy. People are kicking Jesus out of churches, out of families, and it's going to be a sad day because the day is coming. A day of reckoning is coming to this world. God's going to bring it. Hallelujah. Brother, let's read. Isaiah 6, 4 and 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. Wait a minute, read that again. But we are all as an unclean now, thing. Now who is making that statement? The prophet, Isaiah. A prophet of God. Excuse me, prophet, but I believe that gets you too. That, that gets all of us. All of us. No matter who we are, no matter who we think we are, no matter what righteous acts we, that's good. Now, you, 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 if, you, if you've been born again, you're going to perform some righteous acts. If you've been saved, you're going to do that. Your righteous acts will not save you. Amen. Amen. And here's this man of God whom God, God used him powerfully. Yes, sir. God used Isaiah you know, John, John the Baptist, the Bible says, was, was the greatest. He cleared the way for Jesus. He paved the way. Isaiah prophesied more about yes, Jesus than just about any other prophet. Yes, sir. You can read about the prophecies of Jesus, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Ezekiel even. Yes, sir. All through his book. About Jesus, man. But nutheads today are so wise, they don't need him. That is sad. This prophet, Isaiah, declared that we are all, every last one of us, as an unclean thing. So what, how can we be helped? What can we do to save ourselves and, and to bring ourselves in harmony with God? What can we do? Can, will, will going to church do it? No, sir. No, sir. Will water baptism do it? No, sir. No, sir. Who won't do it? Jesus said, baptize, he's, he's told us to do that. But that will not save you. He's talking about baptizing believers. Amen. The book speaks also, I believe in Corinthians, of, of spiritual baptism. For by one spirit are we all what? Baptized. Baptized into one body. See, that's the saving baptism. Water will not save you. Man, can you imagine how many drownings we'd have if we held people down there till they got it right? <laughs> Hold your finger up when you're saved. <laughs> they lie there limp. <laughs> Water would not do it. We are all, every last one of us, and that's why every day we open our eyes, we should be so thankful that God has had mercy on us. Brought us into kinship with, we're his sons and daughters. So this, this prophet said we're all as an unclean thing. And all, of, all our righteousness are as filthy rags. All of our righteousnesses. Brother, what is that talking about? All of our good deeds, all of our righteous acts, all the good things we do for other people, 
all the preaching, all the talking we do about the Lord, all the giving to the poor, yes, sir. visiting the sick. Come on now. Yes, sir. So you're not going to work your way into, 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 into the kingdom. Amen. All of our righteousnesses, the very best lives that we can live, are like filthy rags. This is talking about us, humankind. Yes, sir. Everybody. Yes. God said it, he, he got this thing fixed. Yes, and I think he had Paul to write it, to write it up where, where he, he was showing people he, he's got it fixed like this. So, so hit, redemption only comes by God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Only by the grace of God that no flesh, no human being whatsoever can ever glory in the presence of God. Like, Lord, I really lived a good life. I belong here. I was so faithful in the ministry. No flesh. I had, I had my name on, on 100 roll books in 100 churches. Got baptized 20 times. Without Jesus, without ever having known Jesus, ever having acknowledged that I'm a sinner, not that I'm joining a church. You can't join God. Maybe some of us did, I don't know. Maybe some of us walked up on, on, on our family's doorstep somewhere or another, put ourselves in a little basket, <laughs> rang the doorbell, Say, so, hey, my name's Buster. <laughs> I, I want to join y'all family. You were born. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You were born yes, sir. into this life. Yes, sir. And so it is with God, with the family of God. You, we are born into it. And we have to be born. We have to be. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of our righteousnesses are, are like filthy rags before God. Not just dirty, but filthy. Yes, sir. Maggoty, slimy. That's, that's the way we look before God. Nasty. Yes, Without Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why the prophet, when he saw the vision of the Lord come in his tips of vision, and his train, his robe is flowing. And he said, woe is me. For I have seen the Lord. <laughs> I'm a man of unclean lips, so have mercy on me. Yes, sir. All of our righteousness before God are like filthy rags. We need some help. Yes, sir. Churches, some, and I don't, don't, I don't just go in for talking about folk, but I, I got, I'm, I'm going to preach the truth. I'll, I'll do that. People need help. And the only help that people can get, he's, Jesus said that about himself, that I am the way. He said he was. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but what? Only through him. Nobody. So all of our righteousness to God is like filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Man, we're doomed. That's, that's good. We've messed up. We need help. I can't reach God. I can't do good my, my way into God. That says, I got to read this. Let's, let's get uh, St. Matthew quickly. I, it's all about being saved, having a relationship with God. Say, why well, worked and I did this and that. See, a lot of people are saying and doing a lot of things. Everybody's talking about the Lord. It's not good. There are going to be so many people. And, that's, uh, and I, I hate to say it, but some people are sincere. They just don't have the truth. They just don't have the truth. And you got to have Jesus. That's, that's the truth. You got to have it. 
and God's spirit, see the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you into all truth. And the Holy Ghost will never be in conflict with God's word, never. Never. God's word confirms itself. God is one. He's in agreement with himself. His spirit is not going to contradict what he said. But in the last day, then we're going we're to go back here in just a minute. But the day's coming. We, we've talked about it. Read Romans uh, third chapter. You find out. You find out. Nobody's righteous. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody is. Religion's not going to save you. Nothing's going to. Only Jesus. Only the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why this is going to happen to so many people. And it's gonna, at this time, it's going to be too late. This is going to be one of the saddest days. Thank God that former things eventually are going to pass away, going to be forgotten about. Be no more remembrance of certain things. Because this is going to be a sad day. When Jesus said this, St. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everybody who's talking about me, everybody who's calling me Lord, everybody who's going to church, everybody who's singing praise and, and clapping hands and bowing down, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What can we do to be saved? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So what's the will of God for a believer? For a person to get saved, what can a man do to get saved? You accept the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, the will of God has already been done for us. We just have to accept it. Jesus did the work. He did the work. He lived a perfectly sinless life. Never spoke a word of gal. Never, never sinned against God in any way. He wasn't born of a man, born of God, man. Yes, sir. Praise God Almighty. The sinless, unspotted lamb. We accept what he did for us on Calvary. We receive him as our wholeheartedly and honestly. Not just I'm going to get saved and let God take care of all my problems. That's, that's not receiving Jesus. I'm going to get saved and, and that way I won't have to go to hell. That's, that's not real. See, the, the book tells how people will hear the word in the parable of the sower. How people, those that really get it are those in an honest and good heart. Having heard the word, they keep it. It does something to them. They obey the word. They, 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 they acknowledge. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I need Jesus. God have mercy on me, a sinner. And Well, we talked about that last week briefly, about how these two men went to the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, a religious man, and the other a publican, a vile tax collector. And the publican prayed thus with himself to God. Lord, I've, I've not done all these other bad things like other bad people. I give my tithes, I do this, and I pay this, and, and I, I, I keep the laws, and I do all this good stuff. I'm so goody-goody two-shoes, he said in so many words. I'm not even like this publican. Had the nerve to look down his nose at another human being, a man in need, a person hurting. 
And the publican, so he knew who he was. He wouldn't even lift his eyes to God. He was ashamed. He knew who he was. See, people don't want to humble themselves before God. They don't want to get real with God and tell the truth about themselves. They don't want to do it. Amen. Amen. People like to pretend they're more than what they really are. Yes, sir. This man smote on his chest. Say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Look at me as when you look through the atoning blood. I'm going to meet you. Say, meet me. The Ark of Covenant, have mercy on me. He was saying, I'm a sinner. I need you. Amen. And Jesus said that this man went down this house yes. justified more so than the other. The Pharisee was a religious man, you know, devoutly religious. And some people think they're going in, they're going with the Lord simply because of who they are. Not going to happen. So in the, in the end time, Jesus said this, that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many, not just a few, he said, but many people will say to me in that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not preached the word of God? Have we not prophesied, yea, the Lord thy God? Hallelujah. God says this or that. Have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils? This is real, this, is, this thing is real tight. In thy name, in the name of Jesus, cast out devils. We've preached in the name of Jesus prophesied in the name of Jesus and in thy name done many wonderful works. In the name of Jesus, we've given to the poor. We've set up churches and foundations. Yes, sir. We've done evangelistic work. We've set up churches in, in Africa. We've set up organizations to, to, to help those who couldn't help themselves. That's, that's good. Don't, don't please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. That's good. But that will not get you saved. Amen. That will not save anybody. And God being the just, holy, the only righteous one there is. Hallelujah. Whew. He's the overseer of heaven and earth. It's everything. He is holy. And he's going to let people say whatever they want to say. Get it off their chest. Brag on, 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 their, on their deeds and the good things they've done. And he said, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What you did was sin. That wasn't done for me. I had nothing to do with it. Now, this, that's, that's scary. I'm sure, I'm sure the same thing's written in your Bible. Yes, sir. Depart from, where? What's he saying? Go to hell. I hate saying that. That's just truth. Yes, sir. That's not what he's saying. I never knew you. See, we know a lot about and the whole world knows a lot about Jesus. People in this day knew a lot about Jesus. People knew so much about him they could recognize his voice. They knew that he was, he was a righteous man, a good man. Even Pilate said that. So I find no fault in this man. Called him a righteous person. So y'all take care of that. I'm going to wash my hands in the matter. Mm -mm. A lot of people know about Jesus, but they didn't really know him. And he, made the, he, he taught somebody that. They didn't know him. 
Every, everybody knows President Obama. <laughs> everybody knows who he is. So if they throw a nice party and, and gathering and, and, and greeting for President Obama, and everybody who knows him is invited. See, knowing him, in, in this sense, is a two-way street. Yes, sir. You got to have relationship. Yes, sir. That's what it's about. Yes, sir. So everybody shows up, and I, and, and I show up. <laughs> or you show up. We show up in, in, in our, our Sunday go to meet and close. <laughs> in our, either in our evening wear, whatever. We show up. And he said, hey, hold on. Where, where are you going? I'm here to, to, to party with the president. So I know him. I know him. I know President Obama. He did a lot of good works. He's a very well-educated man, well-spoken. He's a good man. He, he really has a heart for people. So I know him. Wait, let me look at the list. Your name's not on here. Does he know you? That's what matters. Does he know you? Do you have relationship with him? Are you one of his personal acquaintances or friends or family members? That's what matters. And that's why so many, Jesus said it though, he said, see, religion is a sign, the, the, the flourishing of religion, the growth of religion, even people that do talk about Jesus, that's a sign of the end of the age. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a sign of the end time. Yes, sir. The disciples did ask him. Yes, you can read it when you get home. St. Yes, Matthew 24. The disciples said, well, what's going to be a sign of your coming and of the end of the world? And he told them. We always zero in on, on the famines and the pestilence. We do. The earthquakes in diverse places. But the first thing he said was take heed that no man deceive you. For many are going to come in my name saying I'm Christ. And they're going to deceive many. That's a sign of the end of the age. That's a sign that we're getting closer to this event right here that we just finished reading about. Everybody's talking about Jesus. Still, do tell people about the Lord. Do witness. Yes, but don't be frightened when somebody turns around, they want to witness to you. The person you're telling about Jesus, they want to tell you too. Because everybody knows something about Jesus. There's a man who knew Jesus, he thought he did quite well. He recognized him, he knew him. Walked up on him, good master. Hallelujah. What good thing can I do to, to have eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? See, he was just looking at the fleshly. Just the, the flesh, the, the man, just the man. Like he was just a, a good rabbi, a good preacher. A good prophet. Some of the people in that day, according to the disciples, they were saying that he was some of everybody. Some were saying he was Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets, so he had their spirit. This man didn't recognize the divinity of Jesus. Amen. That he was the rock, man. He was the Lamb of God. Yes, sir. He was our He's our brother, our goal, our kinsman redeemer. He didn't recognize Jesus as anything holy. Good master. And Jesus said, why are you calling me good? There's none good but one that's one, that's only God. That's God, it's him. Okay, but what can I do? Well, you know the commandments, what, what the Bible says, what, what, what the scrolls say, the commandments. Oh, all these, you know, I, I've kept all the commandments from my youth up. He lied. It's important to, try to live right, do the right thing. Nobody's ever kept them. 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody. So Jesus, to show that man who he really was, and if you put this test to people today, I dare say that there are even some in here who would fail it. People in churches around the world would do just what that, that rich young ruler did. He said, okay, if you'll be perfect then. He said, you think you're perfect, okay. He, he was a rich man. Take your goods, sell them. Sell out. Give to the poor. That's a noble thing to do. Jesus left glory. Took on the form of a, of a servant, of a servant, and, and came to stand on our bond. Yes, sir. Made himself poor for our sakes, in a sense. So he told this man, you do what I did. Sell out. Sell all the rich, the, the paintings, your wealth. Just sell out, give the money to the poor, and, and, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Come and, and then just come and follow me. It seemed that there should have been some kind of excitement. I'm going with Jesus. I'm going to travel with Jesus. He's, he's going to be my rabbi. I'm going to learn from him. He's going to teach me. Instead, that man who stood face to face with salvation, turned his back on Jesus and walked away sorrowful because he was very rich. And he, he saw himself. I love, see, and if you love anything or anybody more than Jesus, you don't have him. Amen. If anything on this earth means more to you than Jesus, yeah. you don't have him. Yeah. He wants everything about us. He wants the first. He wants our first, our love. He wants to be our first love. Yes, sir. Praise God. Nothing comes before him. Any, anything before him is that's really your God. So this man, he just turned, and we'll see him one day. We will see that, that same man one day. Y'all know why, don't you? Because the Bible says the saints shall do what? Judge. We're going to judge the world. We're going to stand in, we're going to, we're going to stand in judgment with God, with, with Jesus. We're going to stand in judgment with them as everybody. And at this particular judgment, see, all the redeemed have been redeemed. They've been saved. We're going to be standing with God. Everybody standing before this great white throne judgment, according to the Bible now, yes, it's lost. They don't have it. Religious folks, family folks, workplace acquaintances, lovers and friends, that's whoever. People we've known for years. Hugged and loved us and, and, and never told them about Jesus. Come on. Parted with them. Reverie with but never told them about Jesus. We're going to have to look those people in the eye one day. Come on. Yes, sir. As they're set for condemnation. I will then profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So what can we do? What, what, what does mankind need? Jesus came to help us. He, he came to give his life for us. See, God never breaks his chain. He, ne he never breaks his own order, his own principles, his own word. He never does. God's awesome. He is just awesome. And anybody who doesn't give God credit for inspiring this book and putting it down as, as the word of God. Anybody who doesn't believe this is the word of God is a fool. There's so many things in this Bible running from 
way back, the first book, Genesis, on up till now, that point to so many things about Jesus, the Christ, the, the day and time we live, everything. Redemption by blood, by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus came to help us, folks. In old time, God taught the, the Hebrews, and it's written in, in Leviticus. We'll, we'll go through the whole thing one day, but the, the gist of it is, if a person, a Hebrew, waxed poor, and he, if you, he, he had to become and so, so poor he had to, to sell himself into slavery. Whether to his uh, brother or to somebody else or whatever. But he fell in bondage to slavery because he couldn't pay the debt. He couldn't pay. Of course, he became a slave because he couldn't pay the debt. He didn't have the money just laying up in the bank or in a hole at home, whatever. He didn't have it. He had to become the slave of the one he owed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the only way he could be freed was that somebody, yes, sir. of course, one of the conditions was they would have to have the price of the debt. Yes, sir. If he owed three thousand dollars, that person would have to have the three thousand dollars, ten thousand, a hundred million, whatever, whatever the the price of the debt. The, somebody would have to have that. They would have to be willing to pay the debt. Yes, but the only person who could redeem an individual out of that kind of slavery was a near kinsman. Yes, sir. Had to be somebody related. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He was willing, thank God. He was willing to redeem us. He knew what he was facing, but he was willing to redeem us. Came to stand on our bond, to give his life, shed his blood for our freedom. The life of of the innocent for the guilty. Who would do that? Who would do that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. Who would do that? Nobody. Nobody. But God so loved the world. So God, he had it all. The Bible even speaks of, of Jesus in, in, I think, Hebrews, where he, he says of himself that, <laughs> that the Bible says he's not ashamed to call us his brothers. He's our brother. Yes, sir. He, God. He had to become next. God had to figure out a way to do it. He couldn't break his own law. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word Help me. Was God. Was God. And in the 14th verse. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.